Happy Tuesday, everybody. Uh, we are so excited to be with you here today. Um, we are Studio R12 Stencils, and I am Patty. I'm Carrie, and we just got a very nice welcome from Vicki, who says we are her favorite Tuesday twosome. So we will take it. I'll take that. <laughs> yes, all the way. Uh, we are so glad to be here with you. Um, we're actually here for you. So we want to answer your questions about DIY. We want to, we take the questions that you send in mm -hmm. during the week um, or after a video or on any of our videos and we put it into our thinking cap and we decide, okay, what can we do with that? Yeah. How can we answer that with a project? So that is why we're here. That's why we do these lives. Um, we have a lot of talking that we do. Um, we're talking with you. We're talking with each other. We're talking about the projects. Um, so if you want a little less talk and a little bit more DIY, then our videos on Saturday are the way to find that. And that is just serious. Get down to business and do projects and techniques. So and um, we have, are we over 300 videos now? We are over 300 videos. Now. Yeah, so over 300 videos, um, all for free, free content for you guys. Um, we have playlists. Um, if you don't know about playlists on YouTube, um, they have saved my bacon when I'm learning about canning and gardening. Um, so the same works for painting. If you want a technique um, and you want to dive into a technique, then that is a really good way to find all of the videos that we have on, um, say, bleach, bleaching, mm -hmm. wood through stencils, um, crackling. I'm looking at some of the different yes. things. So we ribbon. Have ribbon. We're going to yeah. talk about ribbon today, and we have a really cool video on ribbon that we can share with you. We have a great ribbon video. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. But so anyway, look at the playlist. Um, how did I navigate to them? I'm so like, I know you, how to find yeah, them. When but... you go to our YouTube channel, across the top, there will be tabs and they say home videos. So videos is where you'll find our Saturday videos, which are more succinct videos. And then we have shorts, which are videos that are under a minute long. And then you'll see live. And then live is going to be our Tuesday videos and then playlists. And so then under playlists, we have tons and tons. We make new playlists almost every week, yeah. depending on what we're doing and new things that we can add. So you'll have a lot to scroll through, but then you can also keep scrolling over. Then there's community channels about, and if you hit the little arrow, then you will find a magnifying glass. A search bar. And under the magnifying glass, if you would type in crackle, then you will find videos that have crackle in it. And then it will also have playlists mm -hmm. with videos about crack one. I think um, that's the search one is the one that I lose all the time because I don't think about, I search at the top. Mm -hmm. I don't go into and scroll over Yeah, and scroll over. So that scrolling over and then that little magnifying glass is how you'll search. And yeah. so we might make a playlist that is all on tags. Mm -hmm. We might make a playlist that's all on distressed wood. We might do a playlist on metal or a different kind of surface um so we have techniques yes. surfaces mm -hmm. um seasons themes, yeah like spring christmas mm -hmm. fall that kind of thing um so enjoy yes i probably have sent some people down a little <laughs> rabbit hole right enjoy now. your rabbit yeah. hole of our going yeah. through our, our playlist no doubt um so anyway so um carrie always has neat things to share i always so have news so some news today, speaking of YouTube, last week on YouTube, we released our wine advent Christmas tree. Patty has it over to the side. So I think this is one of the coolest techniques that we have released. And it is how to paint lights to make them glow on your projects. And I had sent this video or a picture of this to some people who had purchased this last year when it was just a surface. And they said, oh, so what all did you do with that? And I said, well, we did this, this, and this. We're teaching people how to paint lights. And they said, oh, we thought those were real lights. Oh, so they good. had thought that we had put lights on In the there, tree. Yeah. So that was kind of a cool thing. A that really cool kudos thing. to you yeah. because we, we trickered people. <laughs> I love to faux trick people. <laughs> I love it. Um, the neat thing about this is um, when you, so say you're doing your countdown and you drink the little bottle of wine, mm -hmm. you can put it right back in and save it for just a display later yes. on. So yeah. um, we did this for the team, took one for the team. Yeah, we and drank these. And it actually also makes it extremely light to move around. Well, and it's um, also a good way. I had made these, this as a gift for someone last year and filled it with the wine bottles. Mm -hmm. And then they had a Christmas party 
And this was a good way to have the bottles of yes. wine without having big bottles everywhere. And then when someone drank one, they could just put another one in and then they had the single size it's a bottles. Lovely, actually, yeah. a nice vertical serving. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, and what a great um, buffet table mm -hmm. um, look. I mean, this would be great at the Christmas party, office sweet. Christmas party, any of that kind of stuff. So um, I love this. This was so fun to paint. You don't have to paint just this. You can use the sponging technique that I did for the greenery, and you can do the light technique on any project or any sign. Those little lights would look really cute on like um, a Christmas, Merry Christmas sign, mm -hmm. and then just interloop them with, um, with any kind of word, art, or any of that. Yeah. So great embellishment technique. Love it. Very cool. And then this week on YouTube, we are releasing another video in our stencil with bleach series and we're super excited about it you'll want to be on the newsletter for this weekend if you're not already go to studior12.com and a spinny wheel will pop up and you can enter your email address spin the wheel you'll probably get a discount on your first order what and then you'll be notified we may or may not have some new designs that we're releasing this weekend Oh, I love, I love new, I love new yes, everything. We are in, we are in the new release season mm -hmm. of fall, Halloween, Christmas. Those are all coming. Yes. Our fall ones we've been That's adding exciting. to, to a collection. And speaking of fall, so today we are showing off some of our new fall designs. So if you missed last week's video, I will link it for you. And last week we showed off our big designs. We also have a collection of small stencils mm -hmm. that are fun word stencils. And when we originally did these, and in most of the photos that you see for them, we use them on books. And they're just, it's a fun way to decorate. And I may have been behind this when I'm a total book junkie, but we also wanted to show you some different examples of ways that you can use these designs in case you don't have any extra books lying around. And so we have some really fun Dollar Tree surfaces to show you today. Yeah, you guys, today is gonna to be chock full mm -hmm. of prepping and how you transform a Dollar Tree something into something else yes. a little bit. But just quick little easy things. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna to wanna to know, you can use this for all of your DIY um, yes. on anybody's anything. Um, they're just gonna be really good techniques. Um, no hippie noodles will be blown, but you'll have Keepers, you almost want to. I don't know about that. I think know. I think we might have a. I think a once you see noodles. some before and afters of what we did, yeah. then a couple of hippie noodles are going to be blown. Yeah. I think we'll I think see. we have some. You guys, let today. us know. But we do have. I just shared. Um, today is eight eight twenty three for the month of August. As we release new fall products, you can shop our fall twenty three collection and get twenty five percent off anything that you buy from that That's collection fun. all month long. So. Yeah. So that is super cool. And we have some new stuff that we're adding. And we are going to just kind of keep a heads up on our Facebook page. We're gonna pop on over the next couple days. We have some, some different more, lines. Some we more dollar, stuff. Yeah, yeah. We have some more Dollar Tree stuff for you that we wanna show you that we're really excited about and some new items that we're releasing. And today we're gonna share with you how you save some money as well. And that not just with Studio R12. And if you're Wondering about Studio R12, it is the word studio, the letter R, and the number 12. Um, so I know we kind of go Studio R12 sometimes, <laughs> and um, I am actually really bad about that. So it's Studio R12, and um, that is, we have 7,000 plus yes. stencil titles for you to choose from, so we have everything that you need. We have a lot. Lots. Share with okay. your friends that like to do that. I think I'm done chatting, and let's get to some fun let's stuff. get going. Um, okay, so oh, I was I going yeah. first. Oh, you're, you're, you are I going, am going first. first. Carrie's first. I'm first because I have some show and tell stuff, and Patty's going to do some painting. So yeah. this, these things that we're talking about, we have different sizes of designs from teeny tiny, like these, which we used on. We'll start with this one. This is our smallest size. So this one is a happy fall, y'all. And it runs, let me pop up here the different sizes, from one inch up to three inch letters. So you can do one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three. 
So this is our one inch size and we painted it on a bag a just to have bag. a different yeah. a gift bag, different mm -hmm. surface, added a bow, something cute that you could put a little candle or a little gift in. Imagine going to like the office and you just love fall mm -hmm. and you brought in like 10 of these because this takes like no time at all and these are pennies to yeah. buy and filling that with a couple of little sweet treats, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little sprig of leaf or something like that and then here's you a nice little office gift yep. or party favor or something like that. These are amazing. And then the stencils are reusable hundreds of times. So um, after five or six times, you want to give them a wash. Mm -hmm. And we have a video yes. um, on how to wash your stencils. Um, so you want to make sure to check that out because that's really important. But how cute is that? Well, that's and we did adorable. run into one thing that I wanted to announce oh, yeah, with yeah. this. So when we paint on paper, and I'll have some videos that I will also share on this. When you are taping your stencils you want to be really careful because if the tape is too sticky it will pull up the paper so what we typically do is grab a piece of tape put it on our jeans or on our shirt a few times just to kind of get that sticky away so i did that yesterday and i did it two or three times on each piece of tape however it was still a little too sticky so if you want to show that closer to steve so what we did was we grabbed an embellishment stencil and painted plaid or the checkers over top of where it peeled it off. So Patty had a good idea as to what she would do in this situation, because you can't really fix paper. So try things like that on the inside of your bag or on the back of your paper. Yeah, and something that you can do, um, this reminds me, I just had a big old grin moment there. Um, back in the day um, when I was teaching with, travel teaching with everybody um, across the country, people would inevitably get a blob of paint on their shirt or you know down here on their lap or something like that. And very clever women would paint a butterfly over the top of the paint stain um, or a little yep. ladybug or a flower or you know you could stencil whatever over it. So it's really neat to turn a little moment into another moment, which is what Carrie did here. She made it into the plaid is just a perfect, perfect example of like fall. Mm -hmm. Like it reminds me of a sweater. I was admiring my sweaters in my closet the other day. <laughs> I know she texts me and she's like, is, is, that, that bad? is it bad that I'm looking at sweaters? Is that bad? It's the middle, it's the height of summer, dog days of summer right now. And um, garden is doing all the gardeny things. And, and I went into the closet looking for something to wear. And I was like, oh, there's Ooh, a sweater. Sweating. It's soft and warm. <laughs> Speaking of sweaters, oh, one of our all the new designs is one that says, sweater weather and so this three-piece design comes with plaid sweater and weather and instead of stacking this one we made this one horizontal on a big surface we did the plaid in the background we did sweater weather and then we added in our our idea we got from market and pulled the plaid around on the top too so this one is one that we kind of put two different things together and then also showed how we can make this a horizontal product rather yeah, than Yeah, and the one. other thing, so today you're going to hear a theme. Um, the, the theme is going to be how to get affordable um, projects for you to give away, for you to and just enjoy your season. This is a piece of 2 by 4 So this is dimensional lumber is what they call it. You can go to the um, hardware store. You can ask them to cut your pieces in different lengths. You can find it in your wood pile in your husband's garage. Don't tell him I told you that. Um, you know, but you can totally, um, you know, just kind of get away for painting for cheap. And then you can reuse these. You can make them as gifts. You can, you know, change all the things. So um, I love it. And then these are also reversible. So you can um, show both sides. Yep. And then we'll have one more that we'll show you. And this one we... Um, kind of layered this to make it into multiple ones. So this one is fall breeze and autumn leaves, and then you have some leaves. So what we did was we made these individual designs. So white and black is still a super popular decor trend for fall. And then we just added a, a ribbon. Yep. And then if you wanna see how great I added it, I just added green tape to the back of it in case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> so Patty's going to show you today how to how nicely to do it a little rhythm, bit differently, <laughs> but that's how I did it. So there's that. Hey, you know what? If somebody's going to be at your house and your fireplace mantle has this on it 
And they want to turn that around to see how well you, you know, like. I love the sign that's on the back. Yeah, it says stay, stay weird. weird. <laughs> you could almost just go that way yeah. with that. <laughs> just leave it that way. Yeah. I feel like I have some granddaughters who would love yeah. that. <laughs> and then we also kept with the black and white theme where we did the autumn leaves. So instead of doing this as a bundle, we did them separately. We had a tea towel mm -hmm. and then we very lightly used the leaves pattern that comes with that just to add a teeny tiny bit of orange in the background. So we used all three, but we used them pulled out as separate projects. And I think that that's one thing that's super important to remember about stencils is that you don't always have to use it the way it comes. You can pick and choose and use different pieces on different things. Yeah, and what I love about this, I'm gonna show you a project in just a minute, but notice that we painted tea towel on this. Mm -hmm. You could have easily as well painted your checks on here. Mm -hmm. You could paint a band and then just checker that band. So super easy to either have ribbon or paint yep. your ribbon. Ribbon costs more than blood, I believe. Um, so I think it's a very interesting thing to be like, let me paint my tea towel stripes instead of buying tea towel stripe ribbon. Um, we have, speaking of ribbon, um, Steve, I don't know if you can get this. Um, so this is our ribbon rack, which is a shoe rack. Um, I think it was Walmart. Is it Walmart? Yep. Yeah, and um, it holds like 62 pair of shoes or some enormous number. But we put dowels on it with little um, binder clips. We'll give it a quick and spin. Then, what is that? We'll give it a quick spin. Okay, yeah. Oh, and it's on wheels. And so everything is organized and by color. Oops. So what I love about this is we have not had a ribbon argument with ourselves one time since we did this. It's the most amazing thing. Um, I love finding ribbon. I used to have a big bucket of it. Um, people do wall-mounted things. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to dedicate to yeah. a wall. I'd rather slide this around where I want it. It's a little bit easier. So um, this, I, highly recommend. We have a whole video on that, and it's amazing. I do have a couple of questions. Yeah. Well, and um, recommendations. And hearts and comments and, hearts and, and thumbs yes. ups. Um, Kat asked, would paper clips work rather than tape for putting your your stencil down and um, for doing what instead when you're taping your stencil down mm -hmm. on your on your bag could you use oh, a paper oh, oh, clip? Oh, oh. the bag yeah I was like that I don't have paper clips that big uh, um, clips might be a good yeah like doing a little clippy action might be a good thing yeah, if this was one flat of these, one of these tiny yeah. binder clips that we have on if here this, give me your checkers yep so yeah, cat, good call on that. So if you put that down there, then you could have that hold that down mm -hmm. and probably two of them and then go ahead and paint and then just move your clip yep. from that side to side. Really work really well on regular surfaces. Yeah, we just have thing. to have a big one. That's mm -hmm. a good, we'll explore that a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. I am a um, binder clip queen. Um, my trade show, sorry, you don't need that. Um, my trade show booths were put together completely with grid wall and binder clips. So I am a fan. And then Vicki had a good idea, something that we Man, didn't I like try, that idea, Dave. Is, which we have done this before, but we didn't do it with these, is to paint the small ones, so the happy fall, mm -hmm. y'all, on the a ribbon. ribbon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I've definitely painted ribbon. I've definitely painted patterns on ribbon. I haven't painted them, huh? Yeah, we, we did, did a cow print. print. Yeah, we did a cow print ribbon. Trying to find that video. And, um, and so, yes, yeah, so polka dots, checks, um, tea towel stripes. You can get a plain ribbon for way cheaper than you can get a um, pattern ribbon. Mm -hmm. And so you can take your plain green and put your white polka dot on it, and then you have exactly the color that you want. Um, and if you're doing some kind of wild... Um, color party for Halloween or something you could do like you know green and pink but then if you needed a ribbon that was another color so yeah paint is your friend I am a paint is your friend girl yeah. I love it love yeah. love love okay I think I'm ready to take a little break okay <laughs> so um, I want to start with this these are super cool um Steve do you think you could grab the plain one that's over there under that stack um so Carrie went to the Dollar Tree and found twice in a week twice in a week <laughs> she went over budget which is really hard I to do I went over budget but um okay so the dollar tree has an and more um section that they're doing now this was three dollars 
But I have to say that this thing is a stout, this is where we're gonna save you some money today. Um, this is a stout little board. It's not flexible, it's not crappy, crappy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm checking to make sure my um, filter was working. Um, it's not a terrible thing. It's three bucks. Um, you can't touch this with an American made anything for three bucks. Um, you know, you're gonna have to get this imported. But when you need a, some, a little something, you want a little touch of something, you want it exactly how you want it, um, this is a game changer to just be able to run down to the store, spend three bucks and bring it home, make what you need and get it done. So. Um, they're amazing. Okay, so the lesson that I have here, so this is all about prepping and doing the things. We have the color um, chip. So we have done our colors. Um, I'm a deco art girl from way back. Um, and so I've used deco art paints forever until I started having a stencil company, in which case I paint hundreds of things in a week. And that would mean so many thousands of bottles of paint. So um, I can't be that girl. Um, most of the time anymore. So we converted my favorite colors, 80 favorite colors into Sherwin-Williams. And can you hand me the little quart, quart thingy? Yes. yes. The little Sherwin-Williams sample size, um, which gives me a good volume. And then we distill it, put it into um, one of these honey bottles just for pourability and the cap and everything, because this is unwieldy to use that. So this is cheaper and it's easier in bulk. Um, but what we did is we made a paint chip chart and you can buy this on our website um, but it shows the color of the paint it tells you the value of the paint which means the lightness and darkness and then it gives you the paint color number that's ours and we refer to these numbers all the time we use 22 on that say and then it gives you underneath it gives you the deco art number of the paint it gives you the Sherwin Williams number of the paint and then it gives you the hex code, which is an online digital code for the color. So you can be digital, you can be bulk, and you can be a crafter. And so it shows you all of these things on these two charts. And then we have it organized by neutrals and colors. And then on the value scale, this might be a hippie, hippie noodle moment. If you want to add detail to something, if you want to shade something or add details to something, you need to go to values up or down and a lot of people don't know what values means but we've done the work for you here so if you have glasses time right so this is a value six if i want to have a color that's going to look good with this i'm going to want to have a value four or a value eight to get it pretty so what you want when you do value changes is you want contrast but if i do this value with say this value it might be too much contrast so it helps you when you're choosing your colors and you can lay this out and you can just be like, I'm gonna choose these two colors and it helps you decide. And then you can go get your colors out. Yeah, smart. And we have that in a digital or a printed mm -hmm. form. And the printed form actually is a ginormous sticker. So when you get it, you can put it on a notebook. It also comes, I think it comes hole punched. Hole punched yeah. It comes hole punched. So you can put it inside of your binder. You can take it with you when you mm -hmm. go to when the, you go to the craft store. store. Yeah, yeah. If you have an idea, if we say, hey, we're using number 27 today, then you can go and you can yeah. say, oh, they used 27. I really liked how that looked. Yes, it's amazing. So what I want to show you today is the difference between the two paints, Sherwin-Williams and deco art. Okay, so I wanted to crackle these signs because they're a nice little rustic sign. And so what you do when you crackle, I put a base of a brown in either one, reverse hands, in whatever the color was. So the deco art and Sherwin Williams. Put my base brown down and then a little belchy. Then I went with my weathered wood. Deco art's weathered wood is by far, hands down, 100% the easiest, bestest, safest, most crackly crackle medium that you can ever get. Um, I believe in this. I've used every kind of it. Um, if you know of a better one, let me know. Um, I'm willing to try new things, but um, this is amazing. I've been using it for like 30 years. So amazing, except for the paint from Sherwin-Williams is a little bit thicker and heavier. And I don't know if chemically it just doesn't agree with the weathered wood. So if you want to crackle, I did these two side by side. Steve, I'll give those to you. Um, this is the Deco Art, and then this is the Sherwin-Williams. So 
Super um, amazing difference in these. Um, and then in a little while, I'm gonna show you how I would make this distressed if my crackle failed. And we do have crackle videos, so you can look and see how to do that. Yep, and okay. I'm sharing the link right now. Yes, and so, but these wood surfaces, I mean, go shout it from the mountaintops, they are amazing. That new $3 and $5 section, while I want everything to be a dollar twenty-five, when you do the dollar twenty-five, it can be a little dollar twenty-five feeling. So at least three dollars feels a little bit more quality. All right, we're gonna jump ahead. More Dollar Tree, okay? And we've got these stand. Whoop! Hi, standing pumpkins. And um, maybe I'll go this way for Steve because he's got the camera. So you can stand these on your mantle and um, do all the things. So they came like this, okay? That was what they looked like from the Dollar Tree. And so now you can see that I changed the color of the thing and then I, I'm gonna show you how to fluff that ribbon because that's really important. And then I added a little raffia and then just changed the color of the sentiment and changed the words. Maybe I didn't want it to say just thankful and maybe I wanted three of them. So like you can make it whatever you want because we have, all these little mini stencils that you can do and use on anything you need. And they're just a bunch of words. So you can get your words, get your sentiments, and then do these come in sets or are they coming individually? No, it comes in a set. Okay. So the um, the fall is my favorite color and grateful, thankful, blessed is a, okay. is a set. So yeah, so you can buy the sets and then you're gonna have those words, you know, forever to reuse and reuse and reuse because you're always going to be thankful and you're always going to be blessed. Isn't it crazy how different that looks? Watching it from the camera version on the computer is just, it's wild how just changing it from black to white and changing the font completely changes yeah, the look of it. It changes everything. Yes, it does. Okay, so let's talk about how we would prep this. This is one of those things. This Okay, so everybody... Clear your mechanism. This is how you're going to prep a pre-finished shiny thing that you don't think you can paint. If I just put paint on this, I don't think I would be successful. I did not try it because I already know. And this one is unfortunately a little bit crooked. I can't do anything about that. Um, I was thinking these would look really cute if you tore this off and put like somebody's picture on there. That Wouldn't would be, be sweet. Mm -hmm. Little pumpkin. We've got a beautiful picture of Ted with the granddaughters playing in a big pile of leaves, that would be amazing on this. Okay, so I could use this technique for the whole thing. I could use this technique for pre-printed little things. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um, so you're gonna take a very light sanding um, disc. I've got, this is 220 sandpaper. And I'm gonna just go on here and rough it up. I don't want texture, I just want rough. I wanna take the shiny off. Okay, so that's enough. And then I'm gonna wipe the dust off, clean up around. Then I'm gonna take multi-purpose sealer. If you don't have multi-purpose sealer in your paint kit, then you are missing out on a very, very fabulous tool. Um, this is absolutely needed um, because you can use it on tin, you can use it on your wood, you can use it on anything that you think is gonna be difficult to stick to. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that out and then last week we touched on brushes. If I got out a foam brush for this, I would run the risk of dipping my brush on either side and I could do it, but it's not my preferred way. I don't wanna to have too much control if I don't need to have too much control. So I'm gonna use this angle shader. We talked about these brushes last week. Um, you need a couple of these flat versions of brushes to be able to do a really nice, balanced effect. So a couple different sizes will do you. You don't need very many. And these can be used wet, unlike the dome brushes, which have to be dry. So I'm just gonna lay my brush. Can you get this right here? Okay. Um, lay my brush into both sides. I'm not scooping. I'm not picking up like that. Laying it down. And then I'm just gonna come down here on my project with my glasses. And I'm just going to, notice I'm just gonna push out to the edge. And then I'll turn it around. Push out to the edge, reload, just a little bit of flat on each side. Reload. Super control, super easy, super nice, super flat. No big lumps and chunks of paint. Now to wash it, um, we do have the how to clean your brushes video as well as the stencils. You're just gonna push down 
um, on the on the edge, on the flat of your brush, down here on the bottom, and I just kind of tap it. I'm kind of doing that egg whisking technique. And then I flip it over and do the other side. Oop, hi. I've got a lot of things out today. I'm gonna pinch out the water, pinch it out in the paper towel, and now I'm ready to go again. So we get this dry. I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry just for a second. That goes really fast. If you don't do this and you just go paint right on top of this, what I like to do is I like to do what I call the scratch test. If I put a coat of something down, I'll give it a back of my fingernails scratchy scratch. And if I scratch it off, I know I have an adhesion problem. So you wanna make sure no adhesion problems. So now we go into our cream and you're gonna do a couple coats of cream. I'm not gonna show you all the coats. I'm just gonna show you the first one. And then I'm gonna show you how to fluff this um, this little thing, whatever this thing is. So now you just go over this and you notice I'm not on my tippy toe. Tippy toes are for control. I want to cover and so I am laying back on the flat of the brush and letting it just smooth out flat. And I always turn my project so that it is comfortable for me. Never try to fight your angles so remember, if you don't like the color something is painted, paint is your friend. You can redo the thing. I actually always call paint my best eraser. So if I don't like something, I just erase it with paint. So go there, pinch it all out. And now I would do another coat of that and so on. I, I had to do three coats to do these. All right, so now to fluff this, this is a flat mess, um, really not appealing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your raffia and you're gonna lift it up and you're gonna find out where it separates. It's got quite a bit of raffia there. So you separate that out. Ooh, that sounded very Canadian. Okay, and then you pull it apart and it kind of shreds. So you can kind of get your thumbnails in there, give it a little separation. If it won't pull, then go someplace else and try there. And then you just wanna give it these little pulls, and that will give you more layers. More layers means more fun and fluff. Okay, so you just kind of get that shredded up, and then you do the same thing to the tails. And these are all cut in a very, like almost like a bowl cut from like the 90s. My poor children had bowl cuts. I'm sorry, boys. <laughs> All right, so you get these separated, and so what you can do is you can go Farrah Fawcett. I just broke that one. And you can give it a feathered cut. So you can go in there and just give it a little bit of a shave and make things not be all one length and height. So a little bit of fluffing will make this much sweeter, much cuter. And then if you add the raffia around the stem, it just really takes it and completes it. So it just makes it much better. Okay, so that is the one inch size letters. And I'm gonna put those over there. And now let's go on to, I think let's go ahead and do the books since they're up here and then I'll do that. Um, we've got a really cool one that you're gonna to wanna to see in just a minute. Um, if you guys are finding any of this helpful, make sure that you are definitely giving us a thumbs up. Um, you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to, but if you want to know when we have new things and you want to subscribe. Um, but the thumbs up at least helps us and it lets other people know that you did find the content interesting and it was helpful. Okay, so we're going to talk about books. Not the kind that you read, but the kind that you don't read. And I, I'm not going to point out this poor author, um, but um, she's in the Dollar Tree and I don't know why. Sometimes things happen, right? Um, but so when you're there, this spine is perfect to fit my one inch stencil. So make sure you keep your little tape measure in your purse so you can measure things. Yes. Now I did take those stencil. I did take that specific stencil with me to the Dollar Tree because I knew we wanted to paint it on a book. Yeah. So I took those with me and had it in my pocket and looked through several different books to decide which one. Yeah. 
and that was the only one that there were enough books yeah. to get that did fit. Well, one thing, so on that note, um, so this is, look at how cute this project looks, okay? This is with three of these Dollar Tree, so it's a dollar, is it three seventy-five? Yeah. Three seventy-five plus our ribbon and our stencils, and you could make hundreds of these, but what is cool about this, how many of you garage sale, because I'm like the garage sale queen, um, garage selling is amazing because you can find 25 cent books, 10 cent books, that kind of thing. So you can go to the garage sales and totally score a bunch of the Reader's Digest books, if we remember those from the day. They're all going to be about the same size, and you can use those for your different projects where you nest things. Number one trend that we're seeing in all of, we get, um, well, let's see, maybe my height of <laughs> stacks of books for our boutique like we get all of the catalogs and i mean if i stacked them up i bet they're taller yeah, than me agree. and they're just some of them are like this big they're encyclopedias and so in all of them these stacked words are everywhere yeah. so you can use your lumber you can use your thin wood you can use your whatever but it's all about the stack of things it's like it was ridiculous how it was everywhere yes agree like i didn't even I, I never even saw that one coming except for we already had these stencils i just didn't know it was going to be the biggest thing well and i think that they got it from me i mean because, i thought they did because we did this back in 2021 right so they saw so it. they saw they it just they saw it. it all the that's all saw it and took it <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about how this process works. Okay, so we get our book and we get rid of the jacket right away. Okay, and Carrie has done this on another video, so she can link that mm -hmm. one. Um, I throw the jacket away, although you could use it as a paint palette or something like that mm -hmm. because it's nice and durable. So we throw that away. Um, unfortunately, my books were all burgundy. Um, and it also has this lovely indented foil title. Okay, so I'm going to show you what to do with that um, and then how you prep to paint this. Not all surfaces of paper and cardboard and book stuff is going to be equal. So I have an equalizer. Okay, and so um, the number one thing you're going to do is take your book outside and you're going to use your equalizer. Everybody that paints and crafts needs a can of this in their supplies because you can use it on paper, you can use it on shiny surfaces, you can use it on things that seem like they might suck up too much water, like the cover of a book. You can use it on unknown things. You can use it through a stencil. You can use it on everything. Um, you can use it for all of the versions, um, your watercolor, your um, ink. If you're gonna sign something with ink, give it a mist of this and it won't wipe off when you varnish it. Um, this is an amazing product. Um, we don't carry it on our website because it has to be delivered UPS and UPS is ridiculously expensive. So get it on Amazon or someplace where you're already going to get a package coming and it'll go UPS and anyway. can you tell them what it's called? Oh, I, you want to know what it's called? <laughs> this is called the Equalizer. Just kidding. JK. Okay, so it's Krylon Matte Finish and it's number 1311. Write that down. It's 1311. It is amazing. I've been using it 20 plus years and it just does everything you'd ever need it to do. And you don't need another matte finish to do anything with. You just need one. And this is the one that I love, love swear by. Okay. So I don't know what this is going to do. I don't even want to take a chance. I don't even want to talk about it. So I'm going to go outside on a piece of cardboard or something like that and definitely well ventilated, read your directions for safety. Um, and I'm just gonna mist this all on the, the book jacket side. And I'm gonna mist it all with the Krylon 1311. I'm gonna let it dry for about, I don't know, five minutes or until it doesn't smell anymore. And then I'm gonna bring it in and I'm gonna proceed. And But I do wanna show you really quick, do we wanna show them how to do this or just link to the um, video? Let's see what else we have left. Uh, let's link to the video. Okay. Just for time savings, um, we're gonna use Liquitex basic acrylic um, modeling paste. And we're going to put that over the spine, which is what we did here, but you can see the other video for that. It shows the technique. So this is that technique. And I did it a little bit kind of rough and because it just makes it look super fall looking. And then I would like to show off my taping technique. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, so I chose not to use a hot glue gun. Um, 
Sometimes it does well for me and sometimes it doesn't. You think as a professional crafter. You Can we just it. put them side by side in the front? <laughs> In the front, yeah, just the front. Uh, just the front? You can't tell that yours looks better on the back than mine does. Truth, <laughs> truth, truth, truth. However, <laughs> on that, um, what I love, this, you guys, I discovered this, we bought a travel trailer a couple years ago, and we have been um, having fun just going kind of locally. We went down to Florida once, but uh, mostly local, doing little weekend escapes and stuff. But things in the travel trailer, when you hit a bump on the highway, it is like a mini earthquake going on inside your travel trailer. Um, I've had, you know, things with all kinds of adhesives, fall off the wall, do the thing. This stuff is called nano tape. It's removable. It's amazing. It's clear. Um, it's two-sided, so it's almost like a carpet tape, but it's removable. And so what I did is I cut a little piece that I put it um, over, over here and I taped down the burlap and then I taped my overlapping piece over here and then I used one piece for underneath this. And it just sticks like a dream and it's amazing. So um, we've linked this to our Amazon thing. You guys, a roll of this lasts a really long time and you're, you're gonna have to maybe buy two because your husband will find out you have it and then he will want it too. So um, that has happened to me. I now have three because I have one for me, one for Ted, and then I have one, <laughs> Steve was just going for it. Um, it's amazing stuff. Um, so anyway, that's how I taped that ribbon down. And then this ribbon is a really good example of if you found a cream ribbon and you took your tea towel stripe stencil and just went ahead and made your tea towel color, whatever color you wanted, you could have one ribbon to rule them all, and then you could make green stripes, brown stripes, black stripes, mm -hmm everything you know so you don't have to buy um i think i think this kind of ribbon is maybe six dollars yeah. a little not on sale um it's expensive and there's not i don't think there's does it say how many square feet or whatever it is yeah it's not a lot um actually it was 2.99 uh, just 2.99 and it says it is 1.5 inches by three yards so, okay so you get three one of these Three yards. Nope. Yeah. One yard. Three of these. <laughs> if, if you measure fabric, you know what I'm doing. I hope that's what all of the social media outlets choose as our, I know, right? our photo for Dude. this. It's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is how you do the books. I love that. Okay. Now let's get Now here. wait, before yeah. we move on. Mm -hmm. So let's talk real quick because one thing I did not cover in my video mm -hmm. I had white books and yeah. I oh, used yeah, yeah, yeah. white. So can you just go over really quick how to paint over the modeling paste? Yeah, so what I did is I used the modeling paste. I didn't tint it, I just used it white and then I let it completely dry. And then I had to, I had to paint all of these burgundy books into these colors. So mm -hmm. they were all these colors. And so that's why I sprayed them with the Krylon, which mm -hmm. is over there. And then, um, but I painted the orange, the brown and the cream. And um, really cool trick. Um, this is maybe a hippie, this blew my hippie noodle today. Um, I was getting these prepared for the live and I was looking at the colors that I had chosen and I saw an example and it was super fun. Um, so I've got this cream book and I was really worried about the cream book in the middle of two dark colors. And I thought, well, that's gonna be a little bit stark, that contrast thing we were talking about earlier. And so I noticed in the example that the woman or the crafter had painted the letters on the top two in the cream to bring those together and then painted the brown on the cream and that brought the brown up. And I loved how that worked and that totally messed with my mind because out of 35 mm -hmm. years of painting, I never thought to do that yeah. intentionally. Like it was an intentional design technique and it was brilliant before we move on mm -hmm. from the books just to reiterate Am I bringing them back yes bring it no you don't <laughs> janice asked do you use the 1311 and then varnish 
So you, um, I don't think I would varnish these because I really like just that yeah, matte look. Just use the 1311 stuck. and then paint. And then paint and then you're done. And then if you want to do a varnish over top, I would probably say use the 1311 again because it has a textured surface. Yeah, you've got texture and you've got grooves and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's hard to get things really smooth. You could use a sponge and do it. Um, but this, for ease of purpose, you could just 1311. Yeah. Agree. Yay. All right. right. When I know the answer sometimes. I know, right? Okay, so we're going to go into, we're going to do a little burlap action. Um, this is really neat. So, um, from Hobby Lobby, I got these um, lovely little photo frames. And they're super sweet, super cute, super textury, rustic. Um, love them. But we obviously need to put something in them. So let me show you how we're going to use this. So we take this and we remove the backing and then we remove the little art piece and you leave the glass in. Okay, and then what I did, and I'm going to show you how to do this, is I took a little piece of burlap and I'll tell you what I did to do it in just a second. And then I stenciled the wobble. So we're gonna gobble till we wobble and I think I'm at the top so I need to be at the bottom. I'm gonna show you how to put these in. So let's talk about how we made this happen. Let me get myself some room. Yeah. Okay, so I have, where's my little burlap set? I had a little sample piece. Mm, did it go underneath? I don't think so. Um, all right, hang on. We're lost. I just had a little cut set of burlap right here somewhere. You guys, I lost it. We knew it was about to happen any day. Carrie's. Told you it was underneath. <laughs> I thought I saw it under there. Okay. Underwear. And, ah! <laughs> it's only Tuesday. Get that out of here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a sharper pencil. And so you can use the insert, but I really liked using the little cardboard. So you're going to find a piece of burlap, and I do have my bolt. When you're getting a bolt of burlap, make sure, if you buy a bolt, make sure you get one that isn't all weirdly folded. Um, because if you get into some of this weirdness right here, then it makes that you can't really make anything happen with that so you're going to have waste so make sure your bolt is in good condition and um, that's super important and you can cut on a bolt of burlap for a long time okay your burlap has lots and lots of lines in it it has horizontal and vertical lines so you want to lay this down with your lines don't be all like this because you're going to end up with weird texture unless you want it that way okay so get that even it's hard to get everything even, so you're going to have to split the difference. And then you're going to take your pencil and just mark. Mark. Okay, and now we have our lines. Get out our scissor. And just kind of go slow with this. Don't try to get there all at once because... Number one, you want to stay on the lines, but number two, you don't want to fray anything. And what was our, we did a burlap tray that mm -hmm. Carrie can link to if she probably has already done it. I have not. <gasps> you got me on this one. This one. Just one. Carrie is a sharp, 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 sharp. Try tool. to stay ahead of the game yeah. here. Okay, so we'll get the last little piece. And then what I did to make my life a little easier is I took, you're gonna see a recurring theme here. I took these outside, all three of them that I did for my project, and I sprayed them with the Krylon 1311 all around their edges and across one side. And what that did is it made it less thirsty so your paint doesn't just suck into it. Ha! My pencil has been painted. Um, so they're less thirsty and 
then they're also, the fraying is way less when you do that. So it takes away any of that when you're handling it, it takes that away. Um, I thought this was a really good technique. Okay, so we're gonna go into our, we need a gobble. We have our gobble and our till you, or wobble and till you, and so now we're gonna gobble. And it also helps the tape release well. So, and you can tell the difference. This side is super fuzzy, and this side is super flat. I love that. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting. One side felt hairy, mm -hmm. and one side did not. And I was, I was just able to tell by touching which yep. side was done. And as we're doing this, you could also paint directly on the glass if you wanted. You could. We, oh, yeah. Good we, idea. We were originally talking about that's kind of what I had in mind. And then we brought the burlap in, and then that makes it changeable. We also talked about painting on a piece of paper. Yeah. On cardstock. Card you could change mm -hmm. out the colors. And, and so for seasons, you could mm -hmm. totally take this and... Yeah. If you put something behind your glass, then you can change it out for every season. Put kids' pictures in there during the summer and then seasonalize it when you want the seasons. So then we're gonna take some black paint. I think we're black, yep. And that was something that I did too. Um, so there's so much texture here. I started out with a brown and I really could not see the brown. So I had to change it to black just to get more contrast and make it stand out. So we're using our dome brush. You guys, if you don't know about our dome brushes, they are cut in a dome all the ways. They are dense, dense, dense brushes, and they stop your paint from bleeding under your stencil. Um, they're magic, and any of you that have them, that believe in them, please put your hand up in the chat. Um, give us a comment, give us a thumbs up, because these are entirely magic brushes. Um, they, they dominate stenciling. Okay, so now we're gonna go in straight up and down because we're on texture. No swirling here. You're gonna use a little bit more paint because it's gonna go through the texture. So you'll reload a little bit more often. If you haven't painted on burlap, I cannot wait for you to try it. It is fun. It just adds so much to the game. Do a second coat. And we'll go here. And then we lift. And now we have our gobble. Okay, I'm gonna give that a little air space and see if I can skip drying it. Move my stencils. And now we'll put this together. So we simply take everything apart. Super fast, super easy. This was $29 for this set of frames from Hobby Lobby, um, but use your 50% off coupon or wait till they go on sale. And then you're looking at, you know, 15 bucks and that is way, way, way more doable. So we have lots of comments about the dome brushes. Trish said, your dome brushes saved me so much time and heartache and my stencils, I love them. Donna says, best brushes for sure. Suzanne says, love my dome brushes. Kelly says, love the dome brushes. I use them on all of my projects. Kat says, love, love the dome brushes. Patty, someone said that they loved them, and Patty said me also. Lots they're the, they're of, the lots best. Of comments. Yeah. Um, this is interesting. So I did all of these with one of these templates, and this middle one didn't want to fit, so I just went in and trimmed a little bit of it off. So they're apparently made to very exacting standards. Um, and so, yeah. Okay, is that dry enough to not leave a mark on my glass? Okay, I think it is. And this one is also different. So just trimmy, trim, trim. Anybody else think they can see without their glasses? Because I, I have that problem. I can see sorta. There we go. And now we'll just go back through and hopefully all these things fit. So I think this was the bottom one because, nope, the top one because price. So you might have to futz with it. And are you gonna be in there? Okay. 
It definitely, when I was futzing with it, I had to put the top in first. And this is really hard to do without being able to move it around. So while Patty's futzing, at the beginning I'm of fussing. this video, she said she didn't think it was going to be a hippie noodle day. So to prove Patty wrong, let us know in the comments if there was something, anything today that blew your hippie noodle. Because I think that we've shown quite a bit of cool stuff today. Yeah, there's there's a lot to know. There's These a, are yeah. keeper, keeper techniques. Okay, so I need to push on this just a little bit harder, but I'm going to go ahead and hold it up so you can see. And now we have gobble to you. Oh, look how cute that how is. How cute. I love like, it. you guys, that looks so darn good. You would pay money for this, you know? Just super, super cute. Yeah. And you could take your own rustic wood. If you're a wood crafter, you could make some little frames. You could put them on little stands. Um, you could take that technique and just mm -hmm. make some bank. Super cute. So love, 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 love it too. Okay, so I think we have, do we have one more? Are we done? No, I think. I Are think we really done? I think we're really done. We had done. so much to show we you. We had so much to show you. It was, it was a big day, you yeah. guys. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that you loved every minute of it. Please give us a thumbs up. Um, just let us know what you think. Um, please ask questions yeah. because um, that is how we know what to let you guys know. Yes. All right. All right. We're out till next Tuesday.